Meowdy, everyone. I am not Meowster. Meowster is sick today, so I I will be your discount Meowster today. <laughs> uh, so hello. For those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Miranda, also known as Nats Attack. I'm the co-host on the show. Uh, tonight we got a we, we got a great episode for y'all. Uh, we have Larissa Frost on. She they pronouns. We'll be talking about uh, plurality and creativity. Content warnings for this episode include dysphoria, mental health, ableism, and bullying. Jennifer would like to acknowledge the indigenous peoples and unceded lands that the producers, hosts, and guests live and have dwelt upon. Today, we honor the Mohawk, Algonquin, and Anishinaabawaki, and also the Kiowa, Comanche, and Lipan Apache. We honor the elders, the human, plant, and animal ancestors of these lands, and celebrate the living descendants of these peoples. May all beings tend these lands for the goodness of the next seven generations and beyond. Howdy, folks. Welcome to Genderful, a talk show interviewing gender diverse folks about their special interests. Hi, I'm Miranda Katita, and my pronouns are she, her. The focus of our show is to interview trans, non-binary, agender, and gender diverse people regarding their special interests, passion projects, and resources for the gender diverse community. We want our audience to know that we hold multiple diverse identities and bring these lenses to the show with our passion for telling our stories. I identify as trans feminine, neurodivergent, queer, and a person of color residing in Canada. We invite you to remember that we are whole people with robust lives, friendships, challenges, and successes. We love and are loved, and we are delighted to share these stories with you. As always, we kindly remind our listeners that no person is the monolith of their identities. Your identities can change over time and are valid every step of the way. If you think you're gender diverse, you are gender diverse. There is no social or medical prerequisites to be included in the community. Welcome to Genderful, y'all. So this week, our guest is Larissa Frost, she, they pronouns, and uh, they are chatting with us about their plurality and creative projects. <laughs> uh, so Larissa was actually suggested as a guest by Alexis Vandom, who appeared on Genderful episode 47 and is actually one of our editors. Uh, so hello, welcome to the, uh, welcome to Genderful, Larissa. It's lovely to have you here. <laughs> Thank you for having me on it took a bit but we got there in the yeah end. <laughs> well better late than never right mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so uh just from like my own personal perspective uh we were chatting about this earlier in the show but like I love having plural guests on I love I love chatting with plural people just because mm-hmm. it is so different from my own personal experience that like I always feel that like I learn so much from talking to plural people and just getting to um, hear their perspectives. And I feel like that the more different someone is from you, the more you can learn from them. Um, so um, it's very much my my pleasure and my honor to have you on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, now, we do have a couple of questions that we ask all of our guests. Uh, so the mm-hmm. first one being, what might be the things you can trace back to your youth that indicate you might be gender diverse one day? <laughs> uh, what what which would it be the uh, sneaking around in my sister's clothing from their closet when mm. I was about seven? Um, <laughs> or would it be uh, wrapping around my blankets like a dress when I was three? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's one of those things I've kind of always known and understood uh, about myself, even if I'd never knew the words or fully understood what gender meant to me at the time Mm. um but it's 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 definitely um gender has definitely been something I have struggled and explored since I was very young yeah no that's I mean as as a trans woman myself that's very relatable I definitely when no one was around would try it on my sister's clothes and tried on my mom's clothes so uh yeah I'm sure that resonates with a lot of people <laughs> <laughs> now how would you say that your relationship uh, to gender has evolved over time so you know how you go to a restaurant and 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 you ask, and you ask for a drink so it's, it's like hey I'll get a coke and the server immediately says actually we have Pepsi here is that all right with you Choose your next words carefully. (laughs) If, if woman is Coke, I'm Pepsi. 
most of the time you're fine either way. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that is an interesting analogy that is, um, I really thought about it that way. So, I mean, I like to make fun of the whole like cola wars because to me like coke and pepsi whatever if someone's like is pepsi okay i'm not gonna be like how dare you <laughs> um but you know that's it's interesting that like your relationship to gender is like it's it's it's, it's kind of like you know coke but not but not really coke yeah coke adjacent <laughs> that's <Pepsi>. that's <laughs> That's an interesting way of putting it anyway. <laughs> it's it, it's cola all the same. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And there's a lot, I mean, hey, there's more than two options for cola. I don't know if you guys mm -hmm. know this. Uh, there's... <laughs> and, you know, even among the soft drink. So I, I'm from Canada. So our soft drink technology is is very much behind yours. Um, we, we have like three soda brands. Um, whenever I go to the America, it's like, it's like I'm in like, soda fantasy land it's like there's so many different flavors it's like oh my god now that's what gender is like there are so many different flavors of gender and if you can't find the one you like you can mix and match until you do exactly my, you can my, you can be a swamp water of a human <laughs> a, 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 a little secret if you can't find ginger ale just splash a little bit of coke and sprite and there you go <laughs> mm, oh we're learning so much today <laughs> Uh, so let's go into our special topics for today. Uh, when did you first start experiencing plurality? About when I was eight years old, I was uh, separated from my family and taken into foster care. Um, that was generally a very uh, traumatic point in my life. And that was about when um, I started to, to really separate from myself mm. in that sense um and from then on that separation itself kind of evolved into internal arguments with a voice that I had never really knew if it was real or not for many many years throughout high school um I don't know how other um systems have come onto the show to talk about their experiences or how they relate it to, but have you done any reading on like internal familial structure or internal family system stuff like that? Um, I haven't done personally that much reading into it. I mean, I have to admit that this is uh, a topic that I'm still learning about, um, but it's, it's my understanding that every plural system is different um, and mm -hmm. There's no one way to be plural, and everyone kind of has different relationship with their with their systems. So why don't you why don't you tell us a little bit about your own personal experience? So we operate as kind of a median system, branches off from Larissa, the core. Mm -hmm. um, lately, my other altars have been kind of dormant. It, it, it's usually a mental health type situation. If I'm mm. very s struggling or if I'm going through it a lot, um, they tend to be a lot more active to take up the more uh, protective and mm. um, caretaker roles that they tend to do. Um, but lately things have been fairly okay. So I haven't really, so I have been the one up front primarily. Um, and it's been kind of difficult to even, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, to communicate through um, the other mm. aspects of that. And when it comes to like the internal family system stuff, it, it's uh, the belief that trauma tends to be the cause of splits within everybody, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, whether it's it's uh, setting a point in time in your life where where you revert back to that age, that mental space, however you go about it, those are different parts mm -hmm. of you that relate to each other internally in your head, and that is a lot of how I have learned to consolidate my understanding with my alters. Yeah, and that's, uh, I mean, it's not necessarily um, 
representative of everyone's experience. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, do, I have heard, I, I have heard that a fair amount where it's, that's, that's one of the ways the brain deals with trauma is by, by creating, you know, alternate personalities. That's, I mean, so plurality is not the same thing as dissociative identity disorder. Uh, mm-hmm. They're both kind of under the same umbrella, but like, they're not the same thing. Um, but for those people who do have DID, um, I mean, disclaimer, I am not a psychologist. This is outside of my area of expertise, but, um, but yeah, um, childhood traumas tend to play very heavily in, into that, in, into that disorder. So, and it's, you know, the human brain is, is, uh, is a wild thing and it reacts mm-hmm. to different stimulus stimuli in different ways. So, um, this is what I was saying before about how plurality is so different from my experience, but, you know, I've gone through my own traumas and I've kind of reacted to them in my own, my own ways. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's really interesting to me how different systems, their alters can have different roles. They can serve different purposes and even the way you communicate them, uh, communicate with them or, uh, you know, different ways that like your different altars can, can become the fronts. That's, it's different for everyone. And I, I, I find that really fascinating. Um, now on a daily basis, how would you say your plurality affects you? Well, um, if one of us can't take care of the whole, someone's got to pretty much. So it, 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 it's basically passing the baton back and forth to make sure um, we eat and we're taken care of, especially mm-hmm. on days where it is incredibly difficult just to get out of bed. Um, so, um, some days, uh, uh, some days it is, it is, uh, Cynthia, who's usually the more, um, adult <laughs> <laughs> out of the system who, who handles the cooking and, making sure that we're clean. And sometimes it's Aubrey who, who's really the more protective um, in, in our think space to, to really make sure that, you know, we go about interactions and conversations in a way that won't lead to any more stress. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like you've developed your own support network. Mm-hmm. And it's, yeah, no, that's, that's really beautiful actually. It's, um... You know, as someone who can relate to the whole like not being able to get out of bed situation, um, it it sure would be nice if there was like if I had alternate identities that could help. <laughs> so no, that's that's really beautiful, and I I love that for you. Uh, now, one thing that I'm personally very very curious about is how has your plurality affected your relationships? It has been pretty back and forth. There has Mm -hmm. been some good. There has been a lot of understanding, but there's also been um, some very adverse reactions Mm -hmm. and some very, um, very, very sour memories attached to some of the reactions regarding Mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a former partner just, just really just, I don't even think I could really go into it. Um, oh, you don't have to if you don't want to. <laughs> this um, is, but this is your space. You talk about or don't want to. You talk about whatever you want, and you feel free to not talk about whatever you don't want to talk about. In some respects, it has been um, beneficial in friends and partners in terms of how they can better understand me and understand. Um how I operate and how we operate as a whole when all of us are having to work in tandem together. If I'm really going through a period of time where that just is my mental. Um, and other times it it's a really good way to tell just who I can feel safe around or not, mm. depending on how they mm. react in the most unfortunate of, of ways and times. Um, and it is also, and also how people react to it is also a good litmus test for who is the primary front, if they even in, or, and if they even inform somebody else who is communicating with them. 
So. Yeah, and, and I can imagine that's, you know, I mean, not just your romantic relationships, but just like, you know, all your personal relationships. Mm. It, I mean, there are various levels of understanding with this sort of thing, and uh, not everyone kind of reacts positively. Um, but as you said, it's it's a good lit lit litmus test for who's going to be in your life, you know, for the long haul. Um, so uh, I'm glad that you do have people in your life that, you know, do accept the totality okay. of you, you know, every, like the, the plurality of your existence, if you forgive my uh, usage of the term. <laughs> no, no, I, I don't mind. Yeah. And I'm really glad to have those wonderful people in my life too. I see mm. two of them in the chat now. Yeah. Hi, Ayla. <laughs> Hi, Lexi. Love y'all. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's something I'm always like very curious about. And um because yeah, it's it's anyways, we don't have to we don't have to get into a whole conversation about that, but it's it's again, it's so different from my own personal experiences that like um, you know, any any sort of like glimpse I can get into that situation is like it's enriches my life. So mm -hmm. um now, how would you say that being plural has changed your relationship to your gender? It has certainly helped me better understand my space within how I want to present myself and how I want to express myself through gender. It's helped me really understand um, my fluidity, my gender fluidity, and honestly, every aspect of my identity mm -hmm. from, um, from not just gendered, but sexuality as well. And, and just all the different parts of what make me me um because at some point if you can accept that you can be different people depending on the situation mm -hmm. it's easier to accept yourself being um so fluid with your gender and so fluid with your sexuality that it could basically change just depending on how you're feeling for the day yeah of course I mean, like if you, again, like you said, if you accept that you can, you're more than one person, that you're, you're different, you're different people, there's really no reason to impose the requirement that they all have the same sexuality or the same gender. Mm -hmm. um, so, and like, uh, I think our last plural guest that we spoke with, like their different alters had different sexualities and, and different, and different genders. So that's, that's something else I find, I find like just absolutely fascinating. Um, is there like, do you have anything that you'd like to share about any of your particular alters, like as far as um, their gender or their sexuality goes? Cynthia is the very femme one. She mm. prefers, she, she, she's, she's, she's the most femme out of everybody. Um, and sticks to the more binary feminine aspects of presentation and pronouns and all that stuff. Um, Aubrey, they, um, just kind of go with whatever feels right at the time. <laughs> what, whatever pronoun makes you the most uncomfortable is, is the one you should go with. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I was actually, I, I was, I was joking today because like, uh, at work today, my top half was all femme. And my mm. bottom half is all mask. So <laughs> I'm just like, I'm going to confuse some sisnets at the office today. <laughs> uh, so uh, you've worked on a number of special and exciting pro uh, projects. Uh, so the first one I want to ask you about is Rain, the animated series. Now, this is uh, based on a webcomic, yeah? Yes. Uh, so why don't you tell us a little bit about that? So Rain is a story about a young transgender woman who, um, after moving and trying her best to just make it through high school, is finally able to finish off her senior year as herself. And it is a story that I hold very near and dear to my heart. Um, fell in love with it the moment I started reading it about five years ago now. 
uh, the comic itself uh, just recently had its uh, 13th anniversary and I drew oh. some some really nice art for it. I usually draw a lot of art for it. Um, and, and Rain the Animated Series is mine and another partner's um, project going about creating short and additional um, fun animated stuff related to the comic that takes place in the canon and is hopefully going to eventually one day just be animations of the whole comic through and through. Wow. Um, it's, been, it's a bit of an undertaking and um, recently um, things have been a little dire so um, it was it was kind of getting to a point where I couldn't keep the project going, so I reached out to the community and the people who, um, and to the community and the people who read the comic and watch the videos and want to see it keep going. Um, I very recently just sent out a hey, we have Patreon here. If we could get more support, we'd probably be able to make stuff faster and um, actually make it all come together really quickly. Um, and, you know, about that same time, uh, the channel kind of blew, uh, past, um, 4,000 subscribers and we've been getting an overwhelming amount of support. Um, so it's, 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 it's been, it's been like a whole world has opened up from just, just a couple of doors being knocked down. Mm. Um, and just earlier, I um, <laughs> I put up a silly little Christmas uh, video that's just the parody of a of a fate extra scene. Um, so, no, that's that's awesome. Um, actually, like I never heard of it before, uh, but um, I think that the world need definitely needs more trans art in it. Uh, I, if I had a comic like this when I was growing up, definitely would have changed my life. Definitely. It is mm -hmm. it is a very, very well thought through story. Mm -hmm. uh, Jocelyn has done excellent work telling the story and um, even just having the chance to, to tell it all over again in a new life and a new setting animated is mm -hmm. it's 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 everything to me <laughs> in that sense and getting to work on it with such amazing beautiful people it's connected me with with uh some lifelong partners and some amazing friends who i wouldn't have met otherwise and even though there have been a lot of rough things to go about it it has been such a wonderful addition to my life the past few years that I've been working on it and I am definitely excited to be able to to take that passion for it and just just bring it home mm, and I, I, I love that and I would definitely urge everybody to to read rain if, if, if you if you enjoyed I want to be cute anime girl if you've read prettiest platypus or or if you're <laughs> or, or if you've you've been around the internet a long time like me if you've read Venus Envy and you were kind of hoping for something like that to keep going and to show that not everything has to end on on such a dire note then then mm -hmm. rain might be the story for you it's it's real it's um it's um it touches on a lot of honest truths about um, transition mm -hmm. and it touches on a lot of um, a lot of harsh topics from just abuse to to depression and all that stuff it, it's a beautiful story I I'm running out of words to say because Aww. there aren't enough <laughs> that's amazing yeah, no, I've been, I've been a big cheerleader for for trans art because uh, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of my friends and colleagues are now getting to make their arts, and uh, I mean, I wish I'd known about stuff like this before, 
um, and uh, I'm kind of part of an older generation. I'm like the eldest millennial. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so like when I was growing up, like the idea, the concept that we had of transgender people was very flawed and skewed. Um, and it was not very flattering. So um, if I had something like, you know, rain, uh, you know, if I had something, you know, 12 years old, if, if, if I could read something like that, like, boy, my life would have really, really turned out differently. And I'm, I'm really glad that like young people growing up these days have access to these things. Mm -hmm. and, um, if anything, we need more of this stuff. Like we need more trans art uh, because so much of our art, especially, you know, big, large, big budget media art is made by cishet people for cis cishet people and white cishet people at that. So, um, so I'm, I'm so glad that like marginalized groups get to tell their stories these days. My goal in life is to make the world just a little bit more gay every day. It's a good goal. And and it's it is through telling these 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 gay, these trans stories and and showing, you know, the, the the good that can come out of even some strife. Because because I feel like there are quite a lot of of comics that while they're cute and fluffy these days, they lean way too heavily on like, oh, nothing can go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh type out that be nice. <laughs> um and, and i think there's there's a place for that kind of well there's for definitely kind of place for that, yes. uh i mean sometimes all you want is like you know a fluff piece mm -hmm. and just you know just like your little comfort food but um, and and i love making the fluffy um, stuff too yeah but i also i also love making people cry <laughs> yes yes <laughs> <laughs> and that's something I've kind of discovered through my own art is, uh, you know, I've always kind of just seen myself as a comedian, not, not as an artist. Um, but, you know, I've, I've made some emotionally effective stuff. And, you know, sometimes when I watch back my own, my own things, like, I start crying. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think that like good art can really makes you feel like the whole spectrum of emotions. So that's, that's really high praise for something like rain that it can make you feel all of those things. Mm -hmm. uh, so your capacity in working for rain, like, so you're, you're doing, you're doing the voiceover work on that. Is that right? I do voiceover. I help with storyboarding and drafting animatics. Um, I do the sound effecting and editing. Wow. Um, I, I am I, I, I do bleed directing the voiceover, the casting. I'm, it's, it's, it is in every sense of the word, my baby that I try to keep going. Mm. Um, while uh, my, my partner, Jem, she uh, handles the music, the animation, um, really a lot more the heavyweight of it. And right now even with um jocelyn as like the the the, the author of rain jocelyn samara even with her as the uh overseer like every frame goes through her everything goes mm. through her first um you know it's set and even with all the amazing wonderful people i have uh on staff i did help with like translating and and uh, for voiceover primarily it's just the two of us <laughs> mm. um putting together um pretty honestly getting some pretty um complicated animation stuff going on um yeah yeah so for those of you listening who may not be aware animation is a lot of work <laughs> it, it is it is a very much a lot of work and that's that that's why I recently reached out for more support because it's mm -hmm. it, it got to a point where um it was getting difficult to justify as much work as the both of us were doing yeah. for free that we were doing. Yeah. Um and even still we're mostly doing it just just out of the joy of being able to do it. Of course. And yeah. as long as everybody else, all the other artists and actors are paid and happy, well, we'll be happy working on it. Yeah, yeah, of um, course. But I mean you still got to pay rent. You still got to eat. Still, so. <laughs> still got to eat. And, and uh, hopefully, 
<laughs> hopefully I won't have to worry about affording just a bag of flour here pretty soon with all the wonderful yeah. support I've been getting. So no, that's amazing. Um, do you have any advice for anyone wanting to start doing voiceover? Take it slow. Mm. Understand that anything regarding your voice is going to take time to get the practice in and to get the uh, vocal strength and dexterity to be able to carry on whatever you need to say or do for however long you're going to need to say it. Mm. And for the love of whatever deity you choose to worship, do not just jump into the first major big project that you see because it is go because a lot is going to be overwhelming and you're mm. going to lose track and lose time of a lot of what you're doing. I am in something odd 120 discord servers at the moment. <laughs> it is, it, it is pretty overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and like the, the most key thing I just have to say is like, have fun and be yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't try to be the next Johnny Young Bosch. Don't try to be the next James Arnold Taylor. Don't try to be <laughs> the, the next um, Yuri Lowenthal. Just be yourself. Have fun. Make every voice yours. Make every character yours. There's something distinct about every character I do, even if it's all generally in the same area. And I try to make them distinctly me without trying to just mimic something somebody else has done before mm -hmm. and that's easier if it's an original character or if it's a character that I like extremely re relate to like Rain or if it's a character like Bird who I got to fill in gaps of her story and talk about some of my own gender journey uh through through Bird through Ava and Bird um I could get the link for that real quick yeah it's 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 a webtoon but there are some some animations that I can get the links to really quickly. But even with it, it's just that as long as you're taking it at the pace you're comfortable with and you're having fun and you're doing what feels right to you voiceover wise, that's a good place to get into it. Also, don't expect much. You're, 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 you're going to find that you're going to go a long time uh, between interesting roles or roles that are going to last you years and years and years. Sometimes the best thing you can have on your resume is just the, the short background extra. And that might be the only yeah. thing you have for a few years. <laughs> uh, no, that's, um, yeah, no, that's, that's all really good advice. Um, and yeah, it's, it's not just voice acting. It just kind of creative stuff in general. It's, it, I mean, not not all of us can be like you know a listers. Uh, some of us have to you know actually put in those 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 working actor roles as I as I call them. So uh, now we do have a question from the chats. Uh, so Pilot Show six 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 asks, "I've always dreamed about doing voiceover or acting work, but it always seems out of reach. Do you have any advice about that?" Take a few steps back and take the jump. Sometimes that's all you need to do with anything creative whether it's it's art or acting or whatever it is that that you want to do sometimes the only thing you can do is to just jump forward and and if you land great if you fall on your knees great if you fall on your face great at least you tried at, yeah. at, 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 at least you made the attempt to get there and not everybody is going to like it or appreciate the attempt and you might feel silly or embarrassed. Um, a lot of my first stuff coming out just doing voices like this, mm. you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, as, as as long as you understand that just trying and doing is more than enough, your best is always enough. As long as you understand that, even if you're not as practiced or as experienced as other people around you. You have time, you'll get better. You'll, you'll, and you'll be able to reach to wherever you're trying to get to. So just, just, just give it a go if you want to. Uh, so I did want, there was another project that I wanted to ask about. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about My Darling Honey? 
I have a giant pile of projects and my darling honey is, well, it's, it's, it's a little world that uh, my partner, Jem and I have to ourselves that we um, just enjoy to create in and write in and draw in featuring some lovely and adorable um, uh, insects and bugs of, of all genders and varieties, um, mostly following the, the perspectives of Darby Gabera and um, Amber Thorne as, as the two of them go through their, their own experiences with love, relationships, and gender. And however that chooses to resent itself, it's, it's a way for me to write how I'm feeling through the lens and perspectives of other characters that um, are all essentially, you know, different representations of the different aspects that make up myself. Hmm. Because I've got, because when it comes to My Darling Honey, there's, there, there's a lot, there's, there's a lot of music, there's a lot of art, there's a lot of prose stories. It's primarily in prose stories, but if you want to have a nice fluffy time and a little bit of spicy time, it's, it, fair warning, there's, there, there's some pretty spicy, explicit stories there. Mm. Um, <laughs> Un- unlike rain that is that is purely pg-13 darling honey is more my thing where i get to more express a lot of how i feel about things and that's everything from relationships to physicality within those relationships and right right, right. that sense um but it's really just a big playground for for me to explore uh, character concepts and explore uh, a cute little fantasy world of of magic and uh, adventure and just the mundane day-to-day life of, of just a couple of uh, cute bugs just sitting having coffee and tea together. So. Aww. <laughs> No, that, that sounds adorable, and uh, <laughs> I totally get what you mean. But it's not PG thirteen. I mean, I'm I'm picking up what you're putting down. So. <laughs> <laughs> I I am of the the mind of like I make stuff for me, and it may mm-hmm. not be for everybody. And I try to be as upfront about the the content and context mm-hmm. of everything I make of like, hey, this this might be, um, this might have some issues and and conversations that might leave you uncomfortable or or be triggering or it might just be this or that. I don't try to exclude anybody from any other work that I do, make, draw, or post. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very much a viewer discretion is advised yeah of course um because at the end of the day i'm making this for me and if if anybody wants to to read it or partake in it that's their own business yeah um yeah yeah. and that's i think that's a really good attitude to have about making art in general you just mm -hmm. make the art that you want to make for yourself and if it reaches other people then great um i think you've when you start making art, like if you're just chasing trends or if you're mm. just trying to make what people you think people want, then the art suffers. Um, so whenever you're making art, like the most important audience is yourself. Uh, I think so, I, th- yeah. I think a very, a very important self lesson on that that I that I've I've taken in mm-hmm. since earlier this year, I started drawing my own comic. My, my own little web comic that mm-hmm. I update. Oh, I forgot to, I forgot to post today. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I was, I was, I was so, I was so like, like ready for, for this. I'm sure your audience <laughs> will forgive you. <laughs> but, but like, just, just, just the stark growth in my own um, capabilities with art and how my art has evolved in just the short um, 
five months since I've started doing this comic. It's, it, it's wonderful. I don't have like a, a direct link. I have, I, I have the archive. I have, I have an archive of my own link that I could share. Um, but I put, po I post it to way too many places for it to be, um, just, just, just this, but it's, it's called between roles. It's, it's, mm. it, it's, it's just my silly comic that I try to do every week of, of just my life, my experiences with gender and what I do between voiceover roles or between relationship roles or between gender roles, whatever, mm. whatever. <laughs> um, as, as long as at the end of the day, what you're doing, what you're drawing, unless it's a paid commission, <laughs> as long as what you're doing is for you or at least fun for you, then mm -hmm. you should you should be doing what you love. Absolutely. And if you can't be doing that, love what you're doing. Yeah. Art, you know, for those of us who don't work in creative fields, uh, at the very least, do something you don't hate that puts food on the table. <laughs> oh yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> and, and 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 if money is the main motivator then then by all means uh, let money be the main motivator <laughs> yeah yeah i mean the way the way i see it is uh my job finances my hobbies and you know art is part of my hobbies so mm -hmm. um you know i i go into the office nine to five turn my brain off and then when i come home that's when i get to do the things i actually want to do so <laughs> Uh, like this podcast, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Now, you mentioned earlier that you started writing your own web comic. Why don't Why don't you tell us a little bit more about that? What's What's it, What's I, What is it about? <laughs> I want to know I, more. <laughs> so, between roles, as I said, is just my little week to week bit of detailing just what goes on between roles, between whether that be gender roles, relationship roles, or voiceover mm -hmm. roles. Um, I feel it. I feel that's a nice encompassing way of putting it. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, sometimes I just call it the the Monday comic about a nobody's life because some days I just see myself as a nobody, and lately I've just been titling it as Diary of a Voice Actor because why not? And it's been it's been a very interesting way to to put to words and to put to pen through drawing um, a lot of my experiences with life and mm -hmm. gender. I think particularly um, one that I feel like a lot of people really resonated with um, were 10 and 11, were, were nine and 10 was basically just a two-parter <laughs> of me detailing um, how I really came to understand what being trans was because mm. um, I spoke about this on Transverse when I was on Transverse mm. um, about how some of my first experiences learning what being trans was, was through a documentary about detransitioners and, oh. and how, how some went through everything the hormones, all the surgeries and all that, and, and went back and others um, were still very much, even in the interview seemed like sad and longing to, to still be women, despite, you know, the social societal pressures that, that caused them to detransition. Mm -hmm. And, and I just, I just remember when I was young and I even wrote down, it's like, wow, you, you can do that. You could change your body that much. It's like, why, why, would, why would you ever go back? I'd love to be a girl. I'd love to be so pretty. Um, and then further on, uh, in like the very next one, it's, it's, it's another time of seeing an intersex woman on TV with my mom and me just being rather um, enthralled by it. And she took a lot of notice of that. And of mm. course, I was, I was too... One, I was only 12, but I was also just not very, a, I just didn't have the um, wherewithal knowledge to like say anything at the time mm. until like within that week 
I found how conveniently my mother and I were the same size at that point in my life. Mm. So everything <laughs> fit perfectly. Um, <laughs> so but this comic has been a really wonderful time for me to explore and recontextualize my life for me and to grow and develop my art. Um, I'm not, I'm not here to be the uwu relatable comic artist, but oh, yeah. I, <laughs> I, um, I, I, I definitely enjoy uh, getting to tell all the stories that I tell and all the ways that I tell them, whether I'm writing for rain or writing for my own, or my own stuff, or if I am voicing somebody else's character to, to tell similar stories. It's, it's something I live for. I love that for you. It's so nice. And also shout out to the transverse hard to you. Um, uh, I've also been a guest on the transverse. So there's, there's good people there. Uh, so yeah, go subscribe to the transverse gang. <laughs> Uh, cool. So that about wraps up the interview. So we do have some uh, concluding questions that we always like to ask. Uh, first of all, is there anything like anything that we missed about your polarity or your creative works that you'd like to make sure that you say? I think I said everything. <laughs> <laughs> I, f I feel like I went on into ramble mode. Um. Oh, we love rambles here. <laughs> so um I, but i feel like if i don't try to 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 put the cork back in now I, i'll i'll keep y'all here for many many hours <laughs> that was, that's fine we, I, we brought you on for you to talk so if you want to talk <laughs> go you go right ahead <laughs> um, i um i voice a lot of of characters from from rain as we talked about from bird avon bird um uh, i voice sonic in quite a lot of trans and female sonic mods that oh boy <laughs> that um are actually pretty popular I, I i think shy of my most popular thing is the the trans femme sonic mod for generations and that's not even finished yet and um I love you too, Lexi. <laughs> um, and I do, I do a lot of, of voiceover just, just around. Um, I'm, I'm fairly convinced I have one of those voices you could pick out in a crowd. So you're going to probably hear me in a lot of uh, Lexi's stuff uh, that she is helping make and produce. And um, there's also quite a lot that hasn't quite been made or announced yet so i'm not sure if i can mm. outright say it but there's this really fun um it's a role that i took over from lexi because uh aspects of the character changed in a way that she wasn't too comfortable continuing to voice and that's something i'm really looking forward to awesome um, so no oh, that's great um uh, so this is this is actually my favorite question to ask because in our current climate that we're living in, um, a lot of trans issues are kind of framed around, you know, our, our sadness and our despair and stuff like that. Um, but I think it's far more important that we share our joy. Trans joy is just so important these days. Mm -hmm. Can you share an experience that you've had with gender euphoria? Just this past year has been a very amazing year for me as far as my transition journey. Um, I am just three days shy of my year anniversary of getting my orchiectomy. Oh, congratulations. And that has been, that has been a very life-changing surgery for me to get. And just this past October, um, I flew all the way to Baltimore to speak with uh, Dr. Del Corral and the Franklin Medical Center um, gender confirmation um, center. And it is just wonderful to think that probably by this time next year, I'll be recovering from, from bottom surgery. Oh, well, that's second wonderful. bottom surgery, technically, because orchiectomy is that too. But 
this this has been a very very wonderful euphoric year for me and um getting to oh awesome <laughs> yeah so gender master who's joining us via the chats uh their bottom surgery consult is tomorrow that's, that's so awesome it's expensive it costs an arm and a leg and for some people it costs their arm well part of their arm <laughs> well yeah part of their arm yes yeah, bad, I'm bad actually, joke. that's um, that's something I'm looking into f- uh, for myself. So I think I may bring that up um, my next endocrinologist appointments. Mm. So in Canada, um, it doesn't cost us anything, but you have to wait. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you have, you have to wait. But, you have but... to wait because there's, I, there's only two clinics I can go to in the entire mm. country. So it's, it, it, the, 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 the unfortunate benefit of the United States being as backward as it is when it comes to healthcare is with regard to medical being privatized. Mm -hmm. It's more lucrative for there to be more doctors for this kind of thing. So there, there's going to be a lot more clinics all across the country in here in the U S for that than in many other countries. So Mm -hmm. while many other countries are very ahead of of, of the United States in terms of quality of care and affordability. Um, many countries only have one or two clinics and that is unfortunate. And I yeah. really want, wish Boy, I could. I could, t- I could make this whole podcast about transaffirming care in Canada and <laughs> how much it's not so great. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but no i am ecstatic for you that yes i uh, that you're able to to get these gender affirming surgeries and you know that how they've made such a huge impact on your life i mean that's and, actually one of the reasons that like you know despite not being in optimal uh circumstances myself it's something i'm still thinking about doing because i hear over and over and over again about how life-changing it is and how like it just a huge quality of life improvement you get from it and how much happier you are after getting it so um but yeah that's that's incredible uh so lastly i'd like to ask uh, is there anything that you'd like to make sure that folks know about your perspective on gender um i said this to somebody in uh, my discord server recently um never feel like you should have done something sooner. Never feel like you have done something too late. To everything, there is a season. And when you choose to start transitioning, when you choose to go forward, the time that you did it was the right time. There's no such thing as, as, early, there's no such thing as too late. The right time is the time that you did it. And it's the most important thing is that you did it. Everybody is different. Everybody reacts differently into the hormones. Everyone reacts differently to um, how they present and, and how their gender shines through and how their journey goes. And spending a lot of your time trying to um, trying to compare to other people and trying to, um, lament that, oh, I, I, I I wish I knew I could have started a decade earlier or even a year earlier. It's, it's, it's like, don't be like that. The time that you make the leap to take whatever the next step is for you, whether it be your transition or just for whatever, that is the right time. So friends, Larissa Frost does a little bit of everything from producing animations to streaming regularly on Twitch. And um, <clears throat> the it looks like the Twitter handle is shinyumbreon360. Um, yep, twitter.com forward slash shinyumbreon360 is the socials you can connect with Larissa on. And here is this week's Clatter Query that you, our audience, can answer on our social media platforms. Do you think plurality is far more common than people realize? as an example of two minds being more than just a saying. I love that question. It's so great. I'd... So folks, go ahead. 
I genuinely think that it, it's far more common than people are willing to understand and realize. Yeah, I agree with you. In the meantime, Genderful would like to thank all of our supporters on Patreon. Miranda Katita, Holly Blash, Winter Vespers, Loch Ness Gamer, Justin Baker Rojas, Yaisio, Ray of Swords, Sherry Keller, Mirami, The Hessian, Trans Capybara. Thank you everyone for being here today. It has been a pleasure to have you join us in chat. I'm sorry for our technical difficulties and that Miranda didn't get to say goodbye. I'm sorry, Miranda, that you're not here right now. I'm sorry. Trans rights are human rights. That's right. See you next time. Genderful would like to thank our guests for being on this podcast. If you'd like to catch us live, join us on Mondays on twitch.tv forward slash gendermeowster. Show notes will appear in the edited versions of the show on Fridays on both YouTube and podcasting platforms. If you have a question you'd like the host to answer or are gender diverse and would like to request an interview, please send an email to genderfulpodcast at gmail.com or sign up via the website at genderfulpodcast.com. As a gender diverse community, the Clouder wants to assure our listeners that we are prepared to moderate our spaces. We will get positive and negative feedback on these shows and topics. And we have a moderation team on our channels, socials, and Discord server ready to deal with this. Please join our Discord server at discord.gg forward slash meowster to meet the community and get a regular digest of solidarity resources. You can also support us with subscriptions on Patreon, following and reviewing us on your favorite podcasting platform, or engaging with our posts and content on social media at genderfulpod and at gendermeowster. You can take a few minutes to rate the show. We will post any five-star reviews on our socials, so get creative. Mention a special interest of your own, a project you're working on, or even say hi to your comfort person in your review. What power? This show is made possible by volunteers, tips, and subscriptions. Shout out to the folks helping us coordinate guests, edit the podcast, moderate the live chat, and post on our socials. Here's our artist credit. Jennerful is hosted by Miranda Katita and Jenner Meowster. Jennerful's pre-show is wrangled by Juice Tex. Jennerful's live stream is produced by Mirami. Jennerful is edited and mixed by Trans Griffin and Free Range Megs. Jennerful's promos and thumbnail graphic are designed by Trans Griffin. Jennerful's social media is managed by Kainzy. Jennerful's theme song is called Hope by Free Range Megs, also known as Soma. The current Gender Master logo was designed by Siptopia. Genderful is the intellectual property of Gender Master, all rights reserved. Trans, Trans rights, rights are human, human rights. rights. That's right. right.